He's heating up! Oh. E.P. Artiverse! This week, we open with Symbiotic Titan defeating a giant blob Boutrati just before school. And when they arrive, Alana questions how Lance's popularity is rising when he doesn't even interact with the student body. But when Alana sees that they're holding tryouts for cheerleading, she takes a chance in hopes of becoming cool herself. Meanwhile, it turns out the blob Boutrati wasn't destroyed after all, as a piece snuck into Alana's backpack, which summons the rest of the Boutrati to Sherman High. Now, Octus must come up with another way to destroy this beast while Lance and Alana protect their peers. How will this go down? Let's find out. First, let's get this comparison out of the way, Kimmy and the other cheerleaders are obviously a Mean Girls parody. You'd think placing them in a Monster of the Week setting wouldn't work out so well, but after reviewing Generator Rex and how they've approached other parodies and references to their stories, I have been proven wrong. And through Symbiotic Titan, they managed to approach this in a refreshing way that manages to make this story entertaining. While Lana's trying out for cheerleading, Kimmy is intimidated by her skills enough to convince the other cheerleaders to sabotage her tryout. What a Bitch. But as soon as the Mitrati finds them at Sherman High, that's when things turn around. Kimmy and the other cheerleaders are forced to join Alana from escaping this blob. Throughout this subplot, we play with their dynamics until eventually Alana finally stands up to Kimmy and points out how big of a jerk she's been. And when the other cheerleaders realize how much Alana has been helping them, they join Alana in her fight to stop this Mitrati. And eventually, so does Kimmy. While it was obvious, it's nice to see that they were able to put their differences aside and eventually grow to respect one another. Will we see this development continue in future episodes? we'll just have to see, because I know Kimmy will return for a future story, but we'll get to that. Meanwhile, Octus actually has a subplot for a change. This one focusing on how Octus failed to stop the Matrati earlier in the episode. How can that still be alive? Which this does mess with Octus a bit since it's impossible for him to make a mistake. It turns out he used a wrong frequency to shut them down, and the only way for him to destroy the Matrati for good is for Octus to receive numerous texts at once to generate a sonic frequency, which not only works in their favor, but allows the other students to fend for themselves. It's a pretty good moment until Alana started singing. Class, don't! Stop. Just stop. Also, Beep brings out a hilarious dynamic for Octus, and I hope we see this more in the future. As for Lance, his role in the story is mostly searching for Alana and fighting off the Butrati, which is where most of the action is. The gymnasium fight is brief, but was still a pretty cool sequence. Plus, he comes up with a clever way to disguise himself from being seen. Symbiotic Titan also gets some action in here too, though I wish it wasn't so brief. With a great balance of comedy and action, this showdown allowed us to explore more of the trio's lives at Sherman High, while finding a way to incorporate the students and give us a look at the recurring set of characters. However, because of the general tone and the way they approach these characters, it is something you need to turn off your brain for because there are some moments where things get pretty ridiculous. The jokes land, but the humor feels forced at moments, and without it, the Monster of the Week premise wouldn't have worked without something to drive it forward. However, I believe Alana did an excellent job at leading the story for a change and I hope we get to see more of this in a less grounded setting. We give Showdown at Sherman High an 8 out of 10. What? Meat, sorry. All meat, thank you.